Hi everybody, it's John Pushkar, and I'm here again today with another episode to try to keep you safe in the world of fuels and combustion equipment. Now today's a little different. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a real forensic engineering case. I'm going to explain to you how engineers get involved in solving mysteries. In this case, it's not a crime mystery, but it's kind of a mystery that helped a neighbor of mine with the house fire that they had. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. In this particular case, a neighbor of mine had a house fire, tragically only six months after constructing a new home. Although the insurer took responsibility for making a lot of things right, things came about that weren't immediately obvious that the insurer did not want to take care of. It took some coaxing, including some work on my part, to get the insurer to really understand what this damage was and that it was actually due to this incident. So I want to take you through some of these steps I'm hoping this can give you some appreciation for how engineers get involved in the forensics world. So I know some of you watch the crime shows, Forensic Files is a great one. You see scientists, they're dealing with little fibers and hairs and DNA evidence and they're solving crimes. Well, engineers get involved the same way in relatively complex issues where the causes and effects of things that happen out there like especially in the cases of fires, are not all that obvious. And I usually don't get involved in home fires. I'm usually flying around the country somewhere after there's been some really big, horrible disaster that involves, tragically, the loss of life, severe injuries, or millions of dollars in damage. These are just some of the cases I've been involved with somewhat recently. But in this case, I wanted to help out some neighbors. These folks had rented a spare home from us while their new home was being constructed. They're really great people. And what happened to them only six months after moving in was just really a horrible tragedy. Fortunately, no one got hurt, but you can't underestimate the impact it has on your life. While for the better part of a year, you're arguing and fighting with insurers and you have people constantly at your home painting, cleaning, uh, replacing things. It's just a hell of a thing to have to go through, especially when you had no part in making it happen. So again, this was a fire within this relatively new home. It was somewhat different because it was limited to just the new furnace. There was extensive smoke damage the smoke was from PVC wiring that burned inside the furnace itself. It was from PVC piping that was connected as drains, as air inlets, and as flue gas outlets. There was some metals involved. There was actually a burn through of the A coil that was there to provide air conditioning. There was a complete loss of refrigerant. And because it happened within the furnace itself, all of the products of combustion were somewhat efficiently distributed throughout the house through all the ductwork. And here you could see some of that smoke damage on the wall. And the thing about when you lay out a residential HVAC system, which I've done many times in my career, especially early in my career, you typically locate diffusers like the floor diffuser you're seeing somewhat near windows and glass because that's where the heat loss is and you're trying to neutralize the heat loss with what's coming out of those registers. Here's one of those diffusers in the floor in the bathroom area. They had a beautiful glass shower enclosure and you could see what happened to that glass. I don't know if you've ever been through an insurance claim. Insurance claims are horrible. Fires are horrible. Uh, been my experience, you never get out of these things whole. 
you go through a lot of grief, time, and effort, and you're just hoping to get back to where you were. So imagine you're in a house for six months. It's your dream home. You've been saving up for this. You're all excited. You spent a lot of time planning. You watched the construction, and now this happens. So there's a really tough human side to all of this. Again, the insurer did a lot of things. They replaced things that were obviously damaged. They did a lot of painting, a lot of cleaning. You can imagine the disruption with groups of contractors through all the time. But as the process wore on and the insurer indicated that they were near the end here and they were considering the claim to be just about closed, it was obvious to the homeowners that the windows were foggy, the mirrors were foggy, light fixtures appeared to be damaged, plumbing fixtures appeared to be damaged. In fact, what you're seeing to the right of my picture is one of the bathroom mirrors looked at through 40 times magnification. You can see the surface is heavily damaged. Here's some light fixtures, and again, you could see kind of the fogginess. And again, it wasn't just mirrors and light fixtures, it was even drinking glasses in the kitchen. It was the surface of the refrigerator display, the microwave display, anything in the house that was glass. Even plumbing fixtures. They'd spent a lot of time coordinating all the plumbing fixtures in the house, and these are nickel-plated, very expensive plumbing fixtures, and you could see the discoloration here. And the ductwork? that distributed these products of combustion? Well, look at the inside of this elbow. All the galvanizing is dissolved. With this galvanizing gone, all that ductwork is now much more susceptible to corrosion over time. After many, many meetings and letters, the insurance company was still saying, you know what, we're done here. We've painted, we've cleaned up, or we've replaced obvious things, but we just absolutely do not recognize that there is any additional damage to your home. We don't recognize that the mirrors are foggy, that the windows are foggy, that the plumbing fixtures are kind of different shades now. Frankly, we think you gotta live with those things. I'm not exaggerating. I sat in a couple of meetings with these folks on Zoom calls, and some of what I was hearing from this insurer, frankly, was cold and mean. I was surprised that these folks were as patient as they were. Uh, startling to me. There were many times I wanted to jump through the phone and scream and yell and say things, but I kind of held back following their lead. I guess the reason that I was so upset was because I understood the technical side. Let me take you into the technical side here, and we'll get into how we eventually were successful to change the insurance company's mind and have them recognize these damages and actually pay up for them. You see, what I knew is that when you burn something, you rearrange all of the molecules. So this is called a balanced chemical equation, and it's a combustion equation. And on the left-hand side, I'm showing you what happens when you burn natural gas, which is primarily methane, and when you burn it perfectly. You see, when you burn it perfectly, you just make carbon dioxide, the bubbles in soda pop, or what we exhale. You make water and you make heat. But it's very rare that things ever burn perfectly, especially in a house fire. You can imagine that the inside of a furnace where the PVC was burning and the natural gas and refrigerant was being released, nothing was burning perfectly. So when you take all of those molecules and rearrange them, you end up with some pretty interesting things. So here's actually a shot of the refrigeration coil, and you can't see it very well. It sits kind of on top of the firebox of the furnace where actual combustion of natural gas takes place for heating. And that coil has actually been burned through. The aluminum, the copper little pieces, they were actually melted, and that released all of the refrigerant in the system. Remember I told you that all of the refrigerant got released? There was a hole burned in the coil? Well, the good news is, is that R410A, it's not listed as being flammable. This is the material safety data sheet. There are material safety data sheets, often called MSDS sheets, 
These documents tell you a lot about the physical properties and hazards associated with just about any type of chemical. The MSDS for R410A, it does, however, say that this material can thermally degrade into hydrofluoric acid. I have no doubt that as this refrigerant was being released into flames that were hot enough to burn an aluminum coil and melt copper, we certainly produced hydrofluoric acid. And the PVC pipe which was consumed, you can see here, well when you burn PVC, you also end up with some interesting things. You see, when you burn PVC, you end up making hydrochloric acid. And these acids, well, they etch glass. Etching is like scratching, pitting, dissolving of some of the glass surface. And guess what? When you etch glass, it doesn't transmit light the same way. That's why you saw the fogginess in the light fixtures that I showed you earlier. That's why when I showed you that magnified surface of that mirror, you saw what looked like a whole bunch of little scratches and defects. I explained all of this in a written report that provided my professional opinion to the insurer. You see, that's what engineers do when they do forensic work. They're often called upon to provide a professional opinion. Now you have to be qualified in what it is that you're providing an opinion about. I've been doing combustion work for 40 years now, so I'm certainly qualified and recognized nationally as an expert in the field. I wouldn't, however, for example, provide an expert opinion on why a bridge fell down. So here's a real happy couple. This, by the way, is not my neighbors, but they're equally as happy. The insurer changed their mind. After they got the report, they discussed it with some of their experts, and they recognized that what we really had here was not a situation where there needed to be more cleaning and different cleaning, but they recognized that we had etching, which could not be cleaned. They provided over $50,000 in additional new windows, mirrors, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, and all kinds of other things that were damaged. So how did it get to this point? Is it because insurers are evil people? Generally, no. I do some work actually for insurers at well. But sometimes they get bad advice. Sometimes the experts they hire don't have enough particular experience in a given field. The other thing you have to remember is that they don't advocate for you. Unfortunately, you have to advocate for you. And last but not least, there are no tricks here. Nothing slick happened here. It's all about facts. If you have the right facts, if the facts are on your side, you can win a legal case, you can battle an insurer. Unfortunately, sometimes even when you have the facts, you have to be persistent. You have to be willing to take that next step, which might be contacting an attorney if you feel that the facts really are in your favor. I hope after seeing all of this, you now do have a better idea of how engineers interface with the forensic world and the legal world. If you'd like to know more about how this happens, I actually have a playlist with several other episodes of cases I've been involved with and how engineers actually interface with the legal world and the forensic world. Once again, thank you for tuning into this episode. Hope you found it valuable. And please, if you're working around fuels or combustion equipment, do all that you can to understand some of the hazards that might be there, because at the end of the day, the life that you save, it just might be yours. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, 
Things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there, the life you save, it just might be yours.